What up, what up, y'all? This is Aaron Yara, and you're listening to the Effective Nerdcast, episode one. Right up at the top, I wanted to give a huge thank you and shout out to my man Jason. You may know him as MC Graffiti. You may know him as One Ton Soup Productions. Uh, he's a fantastic hip hop artist, video creator, just all around renaissance man, just like myself. That's why I love him. But he, uh, he created the theme song that you're hearing right now. The, this is going to be the song for the podcast, so I'm really glad that he could help contribute to this. And uh, I'm with the show. So since this is the first episode, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Effective Nerd. I started the website two years ago, a little, probably closer to two and a half years ago now as a way to help myself be a better person. At the time, I had just gotten out of grad school, and I uh, didn't. I, I had a hard time finding a job with my degree. Uh, I wasn't feeling that great about myself. I was, <laughs> you know, living in, uh, my, living in my mom's basement, playing a lot of video games, had a dead-end job. It wasn't, wasn't the best moments for me. And uh, I wanted to make a website that would help other people that were in the same situation as me. And since I've started the website, my life has con- turned around completely. I'm now a homeowner. I have a wife, kid, family. I have a career now. I have a we- you know I have a successful website now. And that's not that's not to brag, obviously. <laughs> Any anyone who knows me knows I'm not really a bragger or anything like that, but. It's just more show to, sh- to kind of show you the the kind of results you can have when you put a lot of effort into your life and into being a productive and successful person. And that's kind of what Effective Nerd is all about. You know, we love video games, we love music, we love comic books, and we also love being successful people. And that's kind of what I'm getting at with the website. Now, I figured a great place to start the podcast would be to talk about the problems that we face as independent creators and independent artists. I actually asked my audience, so probably a lot of you, what your biggest problems were as indie creators, and those are the problems that I kind of hope to tackle with this podcast. Now, there are obviously I can't, <laughs> obviously I can't make money appear out of thin air or add more hours to the day, but I'll help you the best that I can. So today we're going to talk about eleven problems that indie creators face. Okay, so the the first problem that indie creators face is it was the number one most voted for by far, and it's time management. There's only there are only so many hours in the day and we all have responsibilities that we need to accomplish. And most of the time our responsibilities as in our jobs and our families, that takes up most of the day. And that doesn't even include our creative endeavors or things that we want to do outside, like our hobbies or our crafts. And it's really hard to find time for that. At the same time, the internet gives us an extremely overwhelming amount of information at at any given moment, like even as I'm saying this, there's just gigabytes of data being passed around on the internet, probably way, way more than I can even fathom. And it's all trying to grab our attention, it's trying to grab our energy, it's trying to grab our time, and it's kind of hard to break through the noise and focus and be really, really productive. And I know that a lot of creators and artists feel that they're suffocated by the lack of time in their lives because we have, you know, our responsibilities and then we also want this other thing, whether it's a, uh, whether it's making art or uh, making a website or making a podcast, in my experience. So that's, that's number one. That's the, the, the biggest thing is time management is how to, Take a way to put your goals and your passions and find a way to fit them 
into the craziness of our day-to-day lives. I know as independent creators, most of us still have nine to five jobs or have to work multiple jobs to get by. And just to think about adding a creative project on top of it or adding like a side hustle type thing on top of it is just unfathomable. The second problem being faced by indie creators is finance. And (laughs) we all, I'm sure we all see on social media just the hundreds of Kickstarters being passed around every day. The, um, you know, back in the day you used to have, you know, before the internet you used to have kind of, uh, you had to have a physical product to give to people. So you had to be able to have the funding to print comics or make CDs or uh, actually, you know, invest in paints and uh, canvases where the digital landscape has has made it a lot easier to get our products out to people because we can have digital copies of things. You know, we can have PDF comics, you can have MP3 files, plus, you know, you got streaming, Spotify, Bandcamp, all that. And then uh, digital art is being made. You know, there's a lot of web comics out there, a lot of really great web comics out there. And a lot of us want to pursue those physical products and also have those digital products. So that costs money. Um, building our skills in general costs money. You need, <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're learning how to draw, you need paper, pens, pencils to practice on. Uh, some of us take classes to learn more and it just costs money in general, just being, being creative. I know a lot of people say, you know, all you need is, a uh, a pencil and a piece of paper, but not if you're going to try to sell it to other people or start a business based around your creative projects. And yeah, it's just, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult to find funding, especially with the um, crowdfunding being like so saturated, especially in uh, comic books, or you have streaming services being so saturated when it comes to musicians so it's hard to make the make the money you need to get the project going and it's also hard to compete with other people who want that same money the third problem facing indie creators is confidence uh (laughs) a lot of us indie creators are introverts and we spend a lot of time in our own heads and thinking and we have this passion and, you know, all, all this motivation and drive that makes us want to get things done, get our art out there, get our work out there. However, our brain will also play tricks on us. Uh, it makes it really hard to show our work to other people or put our work out there. I know that was a huge problem for me. I actually had the idea for this website years before I started it, but I just, like I said before, I wasn't really feeling good about myself, so... It was really hard for me to be like, hey, let's get this done when I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't even do it myself, you know? So there are a lot of skills that we need in order to be a creator and even more skills as an indie creator because on top of having to actually do the work, make the art, make the content, we also have to be our own marketing team, our own promotion team. Uh, as I just said in the last one, we have to be our own financing it's it's really difficult. We have to juggle a lot of things. We have to wear a lot of hats. And if one aspect of that isn't hitting your self-confidence correctly, it kind of can unravel the whole thing. And it can take a lifetime to feel confident and comfortable with yourself. And if you have a lot of things, it can take a lifetime to master one. How are we supposed to be indie creators when we have all these different skills that we have to feel confident in. I know like I'm not that confident with marketing. I talk <laughs> I know I talk about marketing a lot, but it's because I'm learning and I want to share what I learn with everybody. If you've read if you've read the website lately. Related to the last one, the next problem facing indie creators is taking on multiple roles. As I said previously, we have to be the marketing team, the creator, the tre- <laughs> the treasurer, I guess. Uh, we have to do advertising, we have to run social media, and it's just a lot 
especially for one person or small teams. You have giant corporations that have full-on departments and teams dedicated to each of these things, and we're, we're here trying to do it ourselves. And that's not to be discouraging because I think the one person or the small team experience is way better than anything a corporation can give you as far as art and personalized content goes. That's why, that's why I love independent art and independent creators because you get that personal experience. You know that what they're doing, the fact that they make the art and then you, you watch them have to hustle and work hard to put it out there and to get people watching it like you know it comes from their heart you know it comes from their best place and that's that's what i think a lot of us love about indie comics underground musicians just any type of creative person that also puts in the work to be the business side and the creative side at the same time and i think i think that's often over overlooked and we we think of independent art as just uh you know just people doing it themselves for their passion which is part of it but people that put the work in is really really attractive to me i really like that a lot now kind of following the same path the next the next problem that you guys told me was business and and marketing and kind of related to the kind of related to the last one but having a having a creative side and having a business side a lot of people feel like those two things don't mix together like um a lot of indie creators feel that if you are working towards money you can't also be working towards passion and in my experience that's not that's not true at all and i kind of wish that indie culture in general would kind of get past this mindset where you have to be you have to be one or the other you either have to be the business guy in the suit or you have to be the creative loving artist and you can you can do both and you really honestly you really should be doing both that's kind of <laughs> you know that's kind of the whole point of what we're doing here and it's just it's a lot to like, like I know, I know I've said this a few times so far, but it it is a lot having to deal with the business side of being creative on top of being creative, and that's one thing that I hope to help help you all with as I learn how to market myself better, as I learn how to produce better content and make better art and um, just run the business side of everything better. I want to help you and teach you how to do that. I already have a few creators that I work with where I, I'm helping them with the business side of their things and they've been seeing increases and in more success on their end so hopefully I can get that to translate to podcast. I do want to eventually offer like coaching or like kind of like marketing and auditing where I'll sit down with you one on one and we can talk about it or we can even do it as a podcast episode but for now uh, hopefully I can make some interesting episodes about business and marketing that'll help creative people kind of get over that hump. The next problem that faces indie creators is creativity. <laughs> it can be hard to be creative, especially when... So, like, normally you would have an idea for something and then you would go make it. However, when you start working on projects and you start working, um, say, with a team of people, like if you're making a comic book and you're the artist and you have to work with a writer and an inker and a colorer and a letterer or just anything where there may be deadlines involved, it can be really hard to be creative on the spot where, you know, most of us kind of wait for the creative juices to start flowing naturally and then strike while the iron's hot, where if you're working on a bigger project with other people, it can be difficult to, you know, just turn the, turn the faucet on and off when, when needed. Um, there's also, you know, writer's block, artist block, insert craft here block, <laughs> you know. Being creative can be a difficult task on its own, let alone all the other things that we have to do as independent creators and artists. 
along the same lines, the another problem facing indie creators is burnout. And burnout is dreaded, as I found out from a lot of you when you told me. Uh, not only just feeling burnt out, but the fear of feeling burnt out is enough to cripple any great creator. And it's hard. I, I feel it. I know uh, some of my friends feel it who are also creators. I get, sometimes I get a text message or a phone call just being like, I'm pulling my hair out, I don't know what to do, I feel like I'm stuck kind of thing. I kind of am out of energy but still have to keep working. And it's very, it's very difficult The uh, having, having to operate all of these different aspects of your creative projects as an independent creator is, it can feel daunting, it can feel hopeless, and I mean, I didn't really want to give advice in this, ep in this episode, I kind of want to just go over the problems, but I'm starting to realize that kind of sounds very negative, but we just, you just got to keep going, and remember what you have, like, remember why you're doing it, that you have this love of creation, and you want to share what you've created with the world, and that's not enough to get over burnout, but... We'll talk about that in later episodes. The next is deadlines. And that, to me, it, it's kind of similar to time management, but I did want to separate it out because a, a lot of you specifically told me deadlines, not just time management in general. The most people did say time management in general, but the <laughs> deadlines was a uh, another big one. And you usually see deadlines when you're working with, say, a publishing company or some sort of outside third-party marketing company because if you're making art just for yourself you can kind of put it out at, at your own pace but as you start to grow and take on bigger projects you may be working with third-party companies or working on teams where they expect you to meet deadlines so deadlines are kind of different from normal time management because normal time management is just kind of how do i fit it into my day deadlines is like how do i fit this into my day also have it completed before this date, which is can be very nerve-wracking and anxiety-producing. The next problem facing indie creators is building an audience. And that's, uh, that's kind of what we're all trying to do, right? I, I'm on Twitter all day talking to you guys, and that, that's what I see. I just see people promoting themselves, people making friends, networking, making connections, and it's it's really hard because the internet has made it has made everything extremely saturated especially when you're talking about one art form because if you think you can take music you can break it down into what an infinite amount of sub genres sub genres styles and each one of those has hundreds of creators if not thousands of creators in it now so even if say you're you're marketing yourself as a hip hop artist there's millions of hip-hop artists in the world. Now maybe if you're into some avant-garde hip-hop jazz noise, <laughs> insert however many other genres there, then maybe you'll be in a smaller pool, but you'll also have a smaller group of people that want to listen to that, or at least know about it. So finding that balance is, is really difficult, and finding a way to attract fans in a space where there's a lot of other creators vying for their attention. It's, it's very difficult, but we, we'll get there. The second to last problem that I wanted to talk about is work-life balance. Uh, as I said, a lot of us have nine to fives. A lot of us have families, have, we have loved ones. We, uh, we volunteer, we have, other fulfilling obligations other than our craft. So it can be difficult going the other way where you think of uh, time management as how do I fit my passion and my creative projects into my normal day-to-day -day routine. It can kind of turn the other way as well where you're not finding time for your actual life responsibilities because you're putting too much time into your project. And that can be really difficult because if you have a family you want to be present with them you want to 
you know, maintain and build your relationship with people that you love and care about. And, you know, if you have a nine to five, you don't want to be slacking at that or it can hurt you financially. And it's kind of important to keep in mind what, why you're doing all this, where you, you have all these people in your life and you have all these responsibilities in your life and you kind of want your creative projects to enhance that. You don't want to necessarily downgrade your life to have a better creative project and kind of finding that balance is a problem. That's why you guys told me it was (laughs) the, uh, and I do have I do have some ideas for episodes on where we can tackle that problem as well. Now the final problem facing indie creators, it got the least amount of votes, that's kinda of why I put it last, but it is finishing projects. And this is a big one for me. Not necessarily starting a project and then having a new idea, and then starting a new one, having a new idea. I mean that does happen to me, I'm sure <laughs> a lot of you guys who talk to me regularly know that I'm always coming coming up with ideas and coming up with strategies that I may or may not follow through. I just kind of like, I like, I enjoy talking about ideas in general, not necessarily being like, I need to do this right now, but just putting them out there and kind of brainstorming as a conversation and not as a solo activity. But well, one problem that I have personally when it comes to finishing projects is, you know, as you work on a project, you get better at whatever skill that project has. Say it's like woodworking, you you make a birdhouse, and by the time you're done making the birdhouse, you're a better woodworker than you were when you started. So me, me personally, I kind of fall into this loop of like, I'll make something and then not put it out there because I got better, and then I'll make something and then not put it out there because I got better, and I kind of get stuck in this loop of building my skills and experience and then using that as a way to kind of give myself anxiety and never finish anything. (laughs) And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. All right. So those are the top 11 problems facing indie creators as voted on by you, you know, the audience. I know this is the first episode, so there really isn't an audience, but the existing audience for effective nerd. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed this first episode. I know it's kind of weird. I'm not, I'm not too experienced at talking like this, especially just talking out loud to myself. So this kind of feels weird for me. So I'm sure this episode is kind of clunky and weird sounding, but just like learning anything else, I'll get there. I'll, uh, do my best to make these episodes entertaining and to work on my speech and how I talk, (laughs) I guess. (laughs) But um, we're gonna work on this together. We're gonna we're gonna learn, and we're gonna learn and grow together. And I kind of, I actually kind of like that. I'm obviously not that great at this because that's how a lot of people feel about their art and their creativity. And I want you to see me as someone who's also low, lowing, growing and learning. And I want that. Um, I want us to build a relationship like that as I work on improving the podcast. I want you to also be working on improving your art in similar ways or improving your content in similar ways. So anyways, until next time, this is Aaron Yara with EffectiveNerd.com. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Effective Nerdcast. You can find me at EffectiveNerd.com social media at effective nerd or you can shoot me an email at effective nerd at gmail.com